Hi guys, Bill Gailey here with a follow-up in uh, Craig Anderton's Electronic Projects for Musicians. And I've done a little work with the, uh, the first project, the preamp. I managed in the first video to get it put on the prototype board here. And I did wind up making a few changes. Um, but anyway, I have a printout of the schematic as this thing is right now. And I'll walk you guys through it, right? Hang on a second. Alrighty, so back over here on the bench, I want to point out a few things I did different in the schematic. Now the original, the original way he has the circuit laid out there, he has a bipolar power supply. And I think he's supplying a plus 12 and a minus 12 DC. And uh, the ground is, actually that's the ground, the uh, negative voltage input is right there. But uh, I really don't have a uh, bipolar supply. So what I normally do for any time that uh, I come across a schematic like that, I use this trick. I, uh, I did wind up having to give this thing 12 volts. I uh, tried 9 and it wasn't enough. There was almost no difference putting the diodes in. It was already clipping even with that out of the circuit. So uh, going up to 12 volts gave me a lot more headroom and then when I put the diodes in the circuit it gave some really really nice uh, clipping right there. I also didn't use LEDs like he calls for. I uh, just used your regular old garden variety signal diodes right there. Just, all right. So, fed it 12 volts, went through a 100K resistor and through another 100K resistor and that goes to ground. So what that does is in between these two resistors, that's about plus six volts and so this winds up being a bias point. It's a virtual ground for all of the circuit in between the input coupling capacitor and the output coupling capacitor. All right, so what does that mean? Um, everything outside of the circuit is referenced to ground. Everything on that side of the capacitor is referenced to this bias voltage or virtual ground. So uh, the rest of the circuit is the same. You know, I've got the same uh, RLC um, going up to here. Now, yeah, I guess this is one thing I should mention. This gain knob doesn't go to ground anymore. It's referenced to the bias voltage. So I missed that one. Uh, what else? We come back in here. We have our amplification stage. Um, it's referenced to the bias voltage. It has the, the switch there to put the diodes in there to give you the clipping, capacitively couple. Now we're on the outside. So then we have a, a master volume and it is referenced to ground and then it goes to the output. That's what you guys wind up hearing at the end of the first video. So what I've done now is I went ahead and put the rest of the circuit back in and I mean, there was no magic to this. I mean, I, I, I literally took a photograph of this page with my cell phone, brought it into the computer and started just moving stuff around like in Microsoft Paint. I mean, it, it, it's really low tech and it's free. So anyhow, so we still have the first part of the circuit. I did add that guy back in. Um, so this winds up being like a buffer out. If, right? So all that's the same on out to there. I have the same mistake in there. That should be referenced to the bias voltage down here. All right, so this other part, this, this circuit down here, uh, this is the meter input and on this side of the capacitor, it goes to ground. On that other side of the capacitor, this guy gets referenced to the bias voltage. All right, so we have a uh, buffer here, capacitively coupled out to the uh, VU, the meter. This is pretty interesting here. This is an inverting amp, because we're going into the inverting input there. 
All right, so when this comes out and it goes to the to the master volume knob, um, it immediately goes out to an output jack. So that's inverted, but he takes that output, feeds it back in through that 10K resistor, puts it into another inverting op amp through the capacitor, a uh, loading resistor for uh, output impedance, and it goes out to a non-inverting output. So now I have the negative out, the XLR jack, which is also connected to there, to the non-inverting output. So a pretty clever circuit. So now that I have all of that stuff up to date, now it was time to move on to prototyping a, uh, a printed circuit board. And I did that online, and I will talk about that in another video. All right, that's it for the quick update, and I will see you guys in the lab later.